How's everybody doing? I'm Jeff Hoffman. I'm the president of Gulf Minor Baseball, and thanks so much for jumping on with us tonight. I think we're going to start right away because um, we certainly recognize we got a Leaf game tonight, and I know most of us want to be watching that game. So we're going to do our best to be nice and efficient tonight and to uh, to get us through this meeting um, and uh, and get us to all the other stuff we want to we want to get to tonight. So, hey, big thanks for jumping on here again. Um, I'm just going to take a quick second to, and to, to welcome everybody, kind of walk us through our, our plan for tonight. I'm going to tur turn it over to other members of our board um, who are going to walk us through some of the other pieces uh, and get you coaches information you need to uh, to get our season our season started on uh, started and hopefully in a couple of weeks. Hey, we are recording tonight's session. You probably saw that when you came in. We want to make sure that uh, that you knew that our plan is is to get this recording up on our website in the next day or so. So if you know anybody who wasn't able to join us tonight, please ask them to jump on the website. Especially if they're coaching, jump on the website. And take a take a watch through this, through this video here as well. We have, have lots of really good information, good information for everybody. Uh, there's so much information to get out to coaches that we've actually the plan is to split our coach meetings this year into two parts. If you've been a house league coach for a while, you would have had a meeting coach with your a meeting with your convener just before your season started. We're gonna do. We're still gonna have that meeting. That's gonna happen in the next couple of weeks, I and mean, you'll hear from your conveners when that meeting is gonna take place. Uh, but for tonight, we're going to we're going to do some of the bigger stuff here, some of the new stuff, particularly stuff around COVID-19. We're going to talk about our plan to get back on the field. We'll talk a bit of stuff around some waivers, some police check stuff. And then we're going to go through some of the some of the coach coaching resources that are available to you as coaches where you can find that information. Uh, so you can start to start to think a bit about what, uh, you know, how you want to start to plan out, uh, plan out your practices. Um, the second meeting that you'll do with your conveners, that's where you will really focus it on the division specific stuff. You know, what's your schedule look like? What are, your, what are the division rules? What's changed from our rules from the previous year? And really get into that sort of real division and game and schedule specific stuff. We'll do that stuff in, a, in about a week or so with your conveners. Uh, tonight we're gonna handle, as I mentioned, the COVID stuff and the return to, uh, return to the field, uh, field pieces here. Hey, there's lots of work that's been going on behind the scenes to get us ready for the season. I just really wanna start by thanking a whole bunch of people and then we'll, we'll, we'll get rocking here. First, our House League Committee has been working tirelessly to pull this together, and they've had plans, and then pivots to the plans, and then more plans, and intended plans, but we got a really good plan here that we're going to walk you through tonight, and so big thank you to our House League Committee to, to get us ready and get us in a good spot for uh, for the season here. Hey, you're going to meet Stephanie in a second. Steph put all our slides together for us. Thanks, Steph, for doing that. Steph's our real COVID expert, too, so uh, Steph can take us through those pieces as we get uh, to our COVID-19 protocols that, uh, that we all need to follow across the uh, Across GMBA. I want to thank our conveners. I see a bunch of them on, on the call here tonight. So thank you, conveners, for getting us started here. You've probably heard from your conveners as they're, as they're trying to select, find coaches, right? And they're going to start working on teams right now. We've just had our, our registration close uh, yesterday. So they're going to start working on teams. So you start, you'll start to hear from them too. But a big thank you to our conveners who are working hard behind the scenes to get us, uh, get us ready for the season. And then lastly, I want to thank all you, all you coaches. You know, we're, we, we expect to have about 700 House League players this year. And none of this happens. None of this happens without you as coaches. Um, and, you know, and at times this coaching gig can really seem like a thankless job. And I, and I think what I wanted to share with you personally is that at GMBA, we're, we're truly thankful for you. Right? This does not happen without you. We can't have a season without you. And we appreciate all the work that you're going to put in to prep for the season. All the, all the hours you're put into prepping for practice. The summer evenings you're giving up. Your summer weekends you'll give up to be here. All the help these young baseball players have an awesome experience this summer. So, um, you know, and to be frank, you know, being a, a youth sports volunteer can be difficult in the best of times. And COVID-19 hasn't made it any easier for sure. And so um, we just really, really, really appreciate all you and are thankful that you've you've offered to step up and help us have a really, really great, really great baseball season. OK, and so we're here to help you. You're going to hear about some of those resources tonight. I just really encourage you um, and, uh, to, to reach out to any of us across GMBA. We are here to help you. We want to help you. We want to make this the best uh, best ball season ball season possible. Okay. And so tonight you're going to hear from a few of us. You're going to hear from uh, Adam Fanjoy. Adam's our VP of Operation, also chairs our House League Committee. Uh, so you'll hear from Adam. You'll hear from Steph, Stephanie Mochuk. Steph's our VP of Rep, our, our Select Chair. She's going to walk us through our COVID protocols. Uh, so everybody's up to speed on those. You'll hear from Rob Robinson. Rob chairs our technical committee uh, and discuss our coaching resources uh, for each of you. And then you'll hear from Ryan Heron, who's our, our risk chair. He's going to walk through some of the stuff, you know, police record checks, those type of things that are things we need to get through over the uh, over the uh, uh, coming weeks as well. 
Then we're going to end with a Q&A session. So if you got questions, we want to hear them. Put them in the chat box. We'll get to them. Um, and uh, we want to hear your, uh, hear your questions as well. Okay. So I think that's enough of me talking. I want to get you guys out of here quickly. So Adam, I'm going to flip it over to you. And, uh, and we'll get started. Thanks again for joining us tonight, everybody. Absolutely. Just want to echo sort of Jeff's sentiments there. I mean, we don't have Guelph Minor Baseball without volunteers like, like you people. So um, I will thank you so much for the time that you put in um, and, and all the work that you're, you're about to do. And as you're going to find out tonight, uh, there, there's quite a few things that, that we're responsible for as coaches in, in Guelph Minor Baseball. Um, so Yes, Steph, if you don't mind running the slides for us, that would be fantastic. Um, we do have a quick PowerPoint presentation, which we will make available as well as the video for this. Um, so all this information will be shared out for you um, as Sorry, we go Adam, through. Are you the host or is Jeff the host? I can't Jeff, share. Uh, Jeff is. <laughs> Technical issue number one for the evening. We're going to try and keep it under five all night. Steph, you should be good now. Um. So yeah, just some of the context that, that Jeff's pointed out to have to do with um, sort of our structure within the House League. So again, myself, I am acting as the House League Chair, also as VP Operations. So you can reach me through email is probably the easiest way. And it's just, as you'll see with all of our GMBA emails, it's firstname.last, so adam.fanjoy at gmba.ca. We do have sort of, if you want to file, follow a hierarchical structure, uh, we do have commissioners for junior and senior house league. For junior house league, that's Jeff Hoffman, who we already heard from uh, already this evening. And the senior house league is uh, Heather McPherson. Um, so th these are sort of your, your point contacts that filter through. So at any point, we all, the three of us are board members. So you can reach out to us for anything that you need. Um, we are here to support you as we go forward. In terms of our conveners, we, we do have, so as Jeff said, you've probably already heard from your convener, or if you haven't, um, there we go. Um, your convener should be reaching out to you. Um, so Craig, I see your question there, and I'm going to say yes without knowing the absolute answer to that. Um, I'm sure Heather will jump in and, and grab you uh, for something. So again, we will have question and answer at the end of this. Um, so there we go. We've got our junior division conveners are up on the screen there. Um, so I, as we go through, you can see you got Vanessa for Rally Cap, Nick for 6U, Corey is 7U, 8 and 9U. We're still looking for volunteers. Um, and again, we are here to support you if you want to volunteer tonight. That wouldn't be a bad idea to reach out and your, your commissioner would be Jeff Hoffman. As we move on to the older division, so our senior divisions, um, we have Chad at 10, 11 U, Lori at 12, Liz at 13, Jim Price at 15, and Kevin at 19 U. Um, so that, those are our, our conveners and, and their contacts are there, and this will all be up on the website that you can get access to. Um, yeah, Craig, House League works fine. That'll filter its way through all of us. Um, so quickly to, to run through what our season plan looks like. Uh, we sort of have, we came up with our original plan and we posted out to social media and sort of that next day, the whole plan changed because the government changed their, their reopening plan from our structured system that we had before. So what we've done is we've shifted to a week one, a week two, and a week three um, plan to open our house league season. And what that means is for week one, we're looking at randomly assigned field time just to get players back in on the field. So it's been about a year and a half for a lot of our house league players since they've picked up a ball or thrown a ball. I'm sure some of the great moms and dads out there have been working with players. But again, for the average house league kid, it's probably been a year and a half since they picked up and thrown a ball. So we want a gradual increase of our returning to train. So our first week will be random. We'll be working with the fundamental skills, looking at, again, how to throw a baseball and begin slowly. Week two, we move into more team-specific training. Um, so this, is, this also allows us a little bit of extra time to build our, our house league teams, which we're going to start. And then week three is where we get into our, our more specific training. Um, sorry. Um, where we get into the more specific training that we're going to be doing, and we're also into gameplay, hopefully. So our whole plan, too, aligns with stage one and stage two opening. Um, as based on the government. So we're looking at um, a target date right now of June 14th for week one, June 21st, and then June 28th, which lets us start playing games on July 5th. 
So there, there's our week four, right? Thank you, right on time, Steph, appreciate it. Um, and that's sort of what we're looking at is we're looking at baseball under stage two. So there is some unknown um, that we do have that we are trying to deal with and get clarification from both public health and the government um, in terms of what will our league size be? Uh, last year for our rep programs, we were limited to bubbles of 50 players. Um, this year, there seems to be a little bit of mixed messaging that we're getting from different people. So we're working to come up with the answers uh, for that. But what it comes down to is we must always, in Guelph, we also have to follow the two things. And it's the return to sport protocols, which are put in place by Baseball Ontario. And we also must follow any government public health regulations, or sorry, I said government public health, any public health um, recommendations that we have um, from Guelph Public Health. So we have a couple different things that we do, and that's what we're adjusting based on it. So one of the big changes that we have for this year is automatically now with our late start, we're looking at extending our season. Um, so we're looking to get between 12 and 14 games for all of our divisions. Um, the exception there is the rally cap division, which has always been 10. Um, so the other divisions, we're looking between 12 and, and 14. We might get a little bit more if we can. Um, and it's to align with what we typically offer. But in order to make that happen, uh, we're going to be extending our season a little bit longer. Well, actually a lot longer. We're going to have baseball in August. Um, so we're looking at going with our house league program right through to Labor Day weekend. So there's all kinds of different things that are going to happen in some of our mid-season tournaments and stuff like that. We may be looking at some alternate nights for playing um, extra games on the weekend to, in order to make that happen. Jumping around on me then. Um, so again, as we look through all of these things, um, it, it all sort of depends on the clarifications that we get. Um, so that's why we have that push back start. So, um, so again, some of the highlights of, of the, the OBA's guidelines to return to sport have to do with as we enter the first stage, uh, we're looking at a ratio of 10 people. So this includes our coaches. So we're, we're going to be li very limited on our diamonds. Um, what we do have clarification on is that we will be able to use infield and outfield as separate venues. So we will be able to make sure that we do that. Um, some of the other pieces, it's going to be very important that, that all players and coaches and everyone attending is self-screening. Um, and I think this has become sort of a natural piece for, for all of our players, for all of us in, in Ontario, this idea of how do we self-screen. We do have a screener available um, that will be posted on the GMBA website, right? And it's basically as simple as if you're not feeling well, um, stay home, okay? Uh, one of the other things is we will have to track attendance. We are currently working on what that's going to look like. Um, it may be something as simple as a Google form. We're hoping that that will pass through the parameters of Gulf Public Health, um, but it may be as difficult as we may have to be submitting uh, paperwork uh, after every event that we do. Um, so we're still working on trying to find a... Um, a little bit easier way to go. Uh, Jeff, I think these are just highlights, or Steph, are you going to take it? I'm fine to stop talking. Oh, or if you want. So these are just the highlights. They're just kind of intended to provide a high-level overview of the return to sport guidelines. Adam's already covered off those three, so I'll just keep continuing from where he was. Uh, so shared equipment. So we are encouraging players to bring their own equipment. Uh, there will still be equipment available for all teams, but anything that does have to be shared does have to be disinfected between users or groups. So things like bats in between people using them would need to be sanitized. In terms of sanitizing, at practices, coaches and players' hands have to be sanitized at the beginning, every 30 minutes throughout, and then again at the end of the practice. During games, that then changes to before the game, every half inning, and then again at the end of the game. And then for no matter what you're doing, whether it's games or practices, any high touch surfaces just need to be sanitized on a regular basis throughout the event. Social distancing, like everything else has become a natural part of our life, but we do have to um, respect that two meters distance whenever we can. There will be situations where we obviously cannot, but whenever possible, that does need to be maintained. Um, part of the new updated version of the OBA return to sport guidelines is the use of face masks. So OBA does now require us to wear face masks whenever we are off the field. So that's including the bench areas, so like arriving to a game um, while you're waiting for your turn at bat, sitting on the bench in between innings. Um, masks will also be required when you're holding runners on at first base. Whenever somebody's performing first aid, unless it's part of that 
player's bubble, a mask would be required. And then coaches have to wear a mask whenever face or face covering whenever they're approaching another participant. So that's a coach or a player. We're also, by the Baseball Ontario Return Sport Guidelines, not allowed to do anything like spitting, have sunflower seeds or gum, share food or water bottles, coolers, and no handshakes, high fives, fist bumps, anything where there's contact between players. So from our experience, we put together a couple of best practice protocols to help kind of mitigate those risks. So obviously ask for help when you're not understanding something. Um, obviously early identification and prevention is best. Um, lead by example, so you're going to be the model to your players, so show them how to wear the mask properly, how to follow good uh, hygiene practices, like don't touch your face, cough into your elbow, um, hand sanitizing, all of that is good practice. Uh, we've also suggested that you delegate a parent to be what we've called a COVID captain, and they are just somebody that's going to help you oversee to make sure things like sanitizing are, is getting done, social distancing being maintained. We've also recommended that you set timers for hand hygiene. So a simple um, alarm on your phone for every half hour during a practice is a great way to make sure that it gets done. And then using things like pylons or some other object just to help space those players out when you're doing drills. So now the big questions are the what ifs. <laughs> so what if you fail the screener or you're exposed to a positive case? So what we have asked is that you stay home and you consult with public health. If you've been identified as a high risk contact, you might actually be asked to refrain from baseball activities for the full 14 days. If you are diagnosed with COVID-19, again, we ask you that you stay home and you have to be cleared by public health in order to return. And you do have to submit some form of evidence that you have been cleared. That can be submitted to the House League team at houseleague.gmba.ca. And just wanted to point out that any health information that is shared with our team will be held in confidence. And if a positive case does occur in our program, which we hope it doesn't because we're confident that with everybody doing their part to follow the Baseball Ontario Return to Sport protocols, uh, we will continue to provide a safe and fun experience for everybody. But should that positive case occur, we will work closely with Wellington Dufferin Public Health to identify and notify any high-risk contacts in that timely manner. And that's part of why that contact tracing and attendance tracking is very important. So those are kind of just the high level overviews of what is involved with the OBA return to sport protocol. I am more than willing to answer any questions on it. We've lived through this last year with the rep system um, and we're going through it again now. So I am well versed in it. So if you need to get reach out, you can reach out to me at vprep.gmba.ca or any other member of our executive team. I'm gonna turn it over to Rob now for technical. Hey everyone, thanks for joining. Go Leafs. Thanks Stephanie and Jeff and Adam. Um, yeah, hi everyone. Um, my name is Rob Robbins. I chair our technical committee at, uh, at Guelph Minor Baseball. Um, yeah, our role really here is to, you know, improve the development of our players and our coaches and we are here to help you. So we're in the process right now as we speak of updating our gmba.ca, our website with um, number of resources for you, coaching resources, um, helping you with practices, sessions, sort of everything you need to, to have a great season. Um, it's, it's not quite complete. We should be done in about a week and a half to two weeks, certainly in, in time for the start of your season. So certainly feel free to consult the website. Um, we'll send out sort of an email reminder shortly once we have everything up there, but, uh, Many of you are new coaches, some are returning and some are sort of, um, you know, veterans of, of coaching. But, uh, um, you know, the other thing to keep in mind is, you know, many of our players and coaches, we, you know, we haven't been on the field for a year and a half, you know, kind of the fall or late summer of 2019. So safety is important. You know, many of our players are coming to the field with, um, with maybe not throwing a ball in a long time. So be patient, um, take it easy, warm ups are important. Um, easing players into it is key. Um, you know, let's not overwork things and, and have a great season. Um, I do want to point you to um, what is called the On Deck app. This is an app that uh, Baseball Ontario has, I don't want to say purchased, but sort of partnered with USA Baseball. Um, it is an iOS and Android compatible app for your mobile device, your phone, your your tablet, your laptop, um, and really, if we were to want to create an app for um, our recreational and rep programs, I don't think we could have done 
a better job. It really is, and I see Jeff is sort of showing this, this right now. I definitely 100% encourage you to, to download it. It has some great information, as you can see here, return to sport, coaching resources. There is a coaching center that, that shows some drills, libraries, practice plans. All of these, in most cases, do come with a, a video library as well. So those of you who, who are, are video learners or your players that are video learners, certainly feel free to, um, to take a look. So if you're planning a one hour practice, one and a half hour practice, this is the place to go in my view. And, and I have reviewed this with many of our, our, our competitive coaches that have been coaching for, for 10 plus years, and they use this on a very, very regular basis. So, so that resource is there. Um, feel free to go in and take a look. Um, we are here as a technical committee to support you. Any questions you have, any anxieties you have about, gee, what do I do? How do I run a practice? Um, feel free to reach out. Uh, my contact information is there. I have a great committee and uh, we are here to help you as much as we can. So um, please have a look. Um, please reach out and uh, have a wonderful season. I hope we get underway. Um, the start of the start of July and sooner. So I'll leave it at that. Turn it back over to Jeff. Thanks everyone. Uh, thanks, Rob. Um, yeah, and, and we'll talk a little bit more about that that on deck app, which is also available on your computers through Baseball Ontario as well, um, because it is a, a portal for for some information that we're going to use going forward. So in terms of the the next steps and, and where we go from here, so this is sort of the what GMBA needs from you as coaches. So the first and most important thing as, as we're concerned with the safety of all of our players is making sure that you understand Baseball Ontario's return to sport protocols. So it's, it's a big document and it does take some time to read through. So any questions that you do have, feel free to reach out. Stephanie's already been referred to as our expert, um, but all of us are quite familiar with it and can point you in some directions. And even when we get stumped, we just go to Stephanie and, and ask those questions. Um, so thanks, Steph, for all of your work there. Um, so that's the, the number one thing that we need from all of our coaches. Um, after that, we need you to fill out the, participate, the adult participation waiver and the COVID-19 declaration. So those of you who were involved with baseball programming through the clinics that we offered last year, um, it's, it's the similar form, similar waivers that we used last year for baseball within Guelph. Um, so we need to make sure we get those completed. Uh, they don't take very long. Make sure you're filling out the adult one there um, and also the declaration at the bottom. So those two need to be filled out. Um, you can do them on your phone if you want to, or you can do them on the computer. Other things to review for yourself are the coach's code of conduct. Okay? And that's put out by OBA and it's been adopted by GMBA, as well as the equity, diversity, and inclusion. Um, and that's one of our pushes this year as a board is to, to ensure that we are in line with the policy and directives there. Um, what we're going to talk about in a second is completing your police record check or your declaration. So there has been some minor changes to the policy here. So we want to make sure that all of our coaches are following them appropriately. And, and you'll hear from a minute from our risk management chair um, who will walk us through that process as well. So our expectations will be for this week, um, the week of May 31st, is you, all, all of our conveners or all of our coaches are going to be receiving team lists from their conveners. Um, so that'll be some information that you can start working on right away once you get it. Uh, the week of June 6th, we are, we're going to have some equipment pickup nights for our coaches at the GMBA office. Uh, so we ask that as you arrive, please wear a mask uh, and follow distancing protocols. But we will be able to come by the office and pick up equipment. So we'll have the big garage door open there for you. Um, and we'll sort of run and get you your bag of equipment that you'll be responsible for. Uh, you'll sign it out and that'll be yours to keep for the season and return at the end. Um, and also that week you should be having with your conveners, your division specific meetings. So that's sort of the groundwork that we have going forward. Um, and so now we'll call on Ryan Heron, our, um, our risk management chair to speak about some of the, the policies around police record checks. Hey, uh, hi guys. My uh, my name is Ryan Heron. I'm the uh, risk management chair here at uh, GMBA. So we we have a few couple like a couple different groups of um, of coaches when it comes to screening. 
So uh, OBA has actually passed a new a new record check policy for this season, but um, for this season it, it's only required to apply or to apply to our rep coaches. Uh, so we're going to continue to follow what we did here at GMBA last last season for this year. So if if you're a brand new coach, uh, you're, you're here and you've never coached before, uh, it's it's really simple. You need to obtain a, a vulnerable sector check. Uh, either through the Guelph Police Service, that's if, if you live uh, within the city limits and um, pay taxes to the city of Guelph, uh, that can be done at that link there, the, the policecheck.guelphpolice.ca. And you see below there, that's our authorization number and the expiry date. Um, there, there is a spot uh, as you go through the, the process to put that in. If, if you do not enter the authorization number and the expiry date, um, you, you will be charged by the police service for that. But if you do enter that, that number in the expiry date, uh, there is uh, no charge uh, for the check. Uh, if you, oh, oh okay. Uh, sorry, I was just reading the question there. Uh, if you do live outside the city of Guelph, so that's anybody who lives in Fergus, Alora, Rockwood, Puss Lynch, you know, anywhere in Guelph or Amasa, um, you are required to complete that vulnerable sector check in person, uh, your local OPP detachment. Um, I've not been able to establish if they are actually open at this time. They have been closed during the lockdown. Um, but I know uh, like prior, just prior to the most recent lockdown, you did have to uh, make an appointment for that. Um, so you will be required to bring two, two pieces of acceptable ID. So that's driver's license, passport, uh, any other kind of government issued ID, uh, along with a, a letter with your proof of volunteer status that, that I can draw up for you. So if you do live um, outside the city of Guelph, uh, email me at uh, risk at gmba.ca and I can send over that um, that letter uh, with the proof of volunteer status for the uh, OPP. And again, at the bottom there, we, we do not reimburse for your police record checks. So if you don't use that authorization number in expiry with Guelph Police, um, there there will be a charge for that. The uh, the second the second group of people um, is if you have completed a VSC within the last three years, and you've signed a declaration waiver every year since. So that's like the, the last three seasons, including last year when I know we, we didn't have a house league season. Um, but so you must have signed a declaration every year for the last, um, the, within the last three years. Uh, then you assign the, the GMBA declaration waiver uh, for this season. So I, I have uh, actually uh, put, put the link on our website. If you go to gmba.ca and open up the risk management page, uh, we do have the, uh, we do have the um, the uh, decoration waiver there, and I see Jeff's uh, navigating over there right now. So it's just under the the about tab, and then down, see risk management, and then scroll down, uh, and underneath the, um, the the new policy, which will apply to House League next year, down at, down at the very down at the very bottom, Jeff, uh, you'll see the new the new links page, and there's the GMBA background decoration, third one underneath coaches screening. So you click on that, fill it out, and then again, return it to risk at gmba.ca. Okay, and I did, I did see in the, uh, in the chat box there one, one uh, good point um, asking if uh, the record check that they had done for Guelph Minor Hockey applies. Uh, we, we can accept uh, record checks that, that work, uh, like if, if it's a vulnerable sector check that was completed in the previous 12 months, uh, any, anything older than 12 months and a, a new one would have to be ordered. Um, so if, if you're unsure whether you need to sign a declaration or complete a record check or you have uh, any other questions, need a letter for, for fingerprinting, if you're asked for that, uh, you can contact me again. That's at uh, risk at gmba.ca. And I, I will be sticking around for, for the Q&A at the end as well if anybody has any questions to ask um, at, at the end here. Awesome. Thanks, Ryan. Um, so another one of the things, the initiatives that we, we want to sort of push a little bit more this year is our, our, our successes. Um, as, as an organization, we've been around for over 70 years. So we really wanted to draw in our, our social media accounts and our websites to start talking about the successes that we have as an association. Um, so we want to really drive drive people to um, our, our Facebook, our, our Twitter, and, and our website to, to share these successes. So if you do have anything um, that you'd like to share, if you have photos uh, of your players and stuff like that, as long as no faces are visible, and even if they are, what we can do is we do block them out, uh, you can send them to social at gmba.ca, and we'll work on creating them through our website. But feel free to share them yourself. Um, it's, it's a great way to sort of to, to build some pride in our uh, Guelph Fire Baseball Organization. So those are all available for us as we go. 
So I think now is a good time as the period is almost half over or over half over. Um, to, to go through some questions and answers. Um, so again, if you have a question, feel free, you can put it in the chat if you want, or if you want to raise your hand. I know I am I can only see about a quarter of you, so uh, we may miss you. You may just wanna say, hey, look at me, and, and we can address some of the questions that you may have here. I have a couple of questions, it's Miranda. All right, Miranda, go for it. Thanks. Um, so just, and it might be a bit too detailed, but that's fine. We're going to get it answered anyway. So um, during uh, when to wear masks, it says when the player is held on first. So is that the player wearing a mask? Is that first base wearing a mask? And then second to that is do base coaches wear masks all the time then? Great question. Uh, Steph, do you want to take that? Yeah. So good point, Miranda. Thanks for asking that. Um, so it is the player that's playing first base so not the runner but the actual player that has, has to wear the mask interesting and coach just have to wear the mask whenever they're going to be within six feet of another or two meters of another person okay absolutely all right daryl h i see you with your hand up we'll get it to you Dale, you're muted. Oh, there you go. Oh, is that better? Oh, sorry, I hit the wrong button. Okay. No I, I'm first time uh, tapping into one of these Zoom meetings. Thanks for the info. Very uh, informative. Um, my boy, he's going to be playing house league this year, and I was wondering, is it too late to sign up for, like, an assistant coach? And I have done a background check. It was about, I'd say, two years ago through uh, Scouts Canada. Now, am I required to do a declaration, or do I have to get a brand new – background check. Awesome, Daryl. So the, the two questions, the first one is uh, assistant coach, I'm sure we can find a spot for you. We're always looking for volunteers. Uh, if you are part of the junior division, so that would be nine U and down, uh, your contact will be Jeff Hoffman. If you're part of the senior 10 U and up, your contact is Heather McPherson. Um, and you can reach out to them and they will definitely put you in touch with your division convener. Uh, the mm -hmm. other question is, unfortunately, yes, you will have to do another police or a full, full uh, vulnerable sector check. Um, they're only good for a 12 month period. Yeah, that's what I that's what I kind of kind of was picking up what he was cutting down, right? Yeah. And then the other million dollar question: Do you, does the uh, coaches or the assistant coaches have to do that respect and sports training as well? Not specifically for GMBA, but if you want to, we definitely won't discourage you from taking on additional training. Okay, okay, because I've been there, done that, got the got the thing to do it. That's all. I'm just curious, like how how it works. That's also yeah, very informative. Thanks, man. No problem. Um, just looking through the chat, I'm going to quickly go through and answer some of them very quickly. Um, the question do is sanitizer going to be provided for the coaches? Yes, all of our teams will be provided with sanitizer and wipes to be used um, this year. Uh, how do we deal with any mask exemptions and parents allowed to stay and watch? There was a limit of one parent at hockey this past year. Steph, do you want to take on that question? <laughs> aren't specifically addressed in the Baseball Ontario guidelines so I will have to like look into that a little bit further. Um, we did not actually run into that situation last year so I don't have an answer to that question unfortunately. As for the limit, there had been a limit of one parent at one point in time in the return to sport guidelines for Baseball Ontario. That has been removed. However, having said that, we do have to like be mindful of gathering limits so it is possible that depending upon what we reopen with, what those gathering limits look like for sports specifically, they may then go back and implement a one parent rule. So stay tuned. <laughs> Thanks, Steph. And yeah, that's part of it. A, a lot of our, our rules and regulations are changing daily and we're trying to keep up with most of them. Um, so going through the chat, I see some people with their hands up as well. We'll get to you in a second. Um, GMBA website is powered by Goalline. Unfortunately, we do not have the mobile app, so we cannot use that currently to track attendance. Um, Andrew Goddard, I know not a lot of us will have measuring tapes out there, but I've noticed that in the official roadmap for step one, it lists that now three meters instead of two meters of distance. Um, Steph, do you want to tackle that? So I have not seen it in the official roadmap, but I will definitely go back and have a look. 
Um, in the Baseball Ontario document, it does say two meters, but I do know from my personal experience, the recommended is now three meters for anything that's physically exerting. Right. So three meters is great if you can do it. Two meters is by Baseball Ontario the minimum. For sure. Awesome. Thanks, Steph. Uh, we'll go to Daryl Tremblay. If you want to unmute yourself. There we go. Hey, it's just kind of a, a specific question with the, the sanitizer. I'm just thinking, you guys were saying that, that it's ideal for players to have their own bats, but are they not still going to have to be sanitized after every at bat? Because we're going to have to, like, the coach standing there is going to have to get the bat back every at bat. Do, does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. I get, I get the question. So, sorry. Um, yeah, absolutely. The one of the answers that the way that we handled that, or at least my team handled it last year in um, rep, was we were grabbing the the barrels of the bats. So the the coach who was going out to pick it up grabbed the barrel of the bat and then would put it down so that the players were using the handle. Um, okay, all yeah, right. So that that was do, kind of where I was yeah. thinking it might go. Okay. We also do have wipes. There will be sanitizing wipes that we can use. Yeah. So if, if you want to go that extra step, that's always encouraged as well. Yeah. No. 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 That's fine. We also used, uh, like, uh, the, uh, one of the coaches would have a glove on. Yeah, so that's yeah. no longer, Steph can correct me if I'm wrong. But oh, that's no longer that allowed? No longer, it's not that it's not allowed, it's just no longer necessary. Okay, okay gotcha. So we get okay, gotcha. All right. um, uh, Adriana, you had your hand up. Yeah, that's actually my daughter. Um, I'm Mandy. Uh, I have a question on police checks or vulnerable um status checks um my daughter is 13 and will be volunteering with us um this year does she need one ryan that's a question for you yeah, i'll take that up uh, so it, we, we can actually only legally request vulnerable sector checks for people over the age of 18 and unless we believe that they have have been tried as an adult as a youth um, so for, for those under the age of 18, uh, we're encouraged to take other screening practices, like just kind of finding or like, like a couple of references or, or something like that to the screening instead of the vulnerable sector check. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, David O'Driscoll, you have your hand up. I do. Um, quick question about the catcher's equipment. So our, like my thing is I'd say we use the same catcher for the whole game I know traditionally we change every inning but with the, the whole COVID thing I I I would push for having a catcher for the whole game because we're sharing equipment right yeah it's, it's a great point David um so this is certainly one of the challenges that we do have uh, and some of our leagues do have or some of our divisions do have catcher specific rules that limit them but every team will have two sets of catchers equipment um and we have talked about getting a third set for teams as well um so there will be some additional equipment that will be available so yeah two catchers is probably the way to go um for a game to to limit that and then also you have to be cautious of the the catcher, the cat, pitchers catching and catchers pitching in the same game um, to avoid that in some of our leagues. Can I, can I ask one more question? Yeah, of course. My son likes to catch and he's a lefty. Any uh, way of getting right handed catcher smiths? I believe we have a couple in the office. If you email equipment at gmba.ca, um, they should be able to set you up with, with one. I imagine that can be a, a pretty specific order for my order. Them actually, when I was in GMBA, so yeah, they do exist, or we used to have them anyways. That was All 15 right. years cool. ago, Ryan. Oh, it was not that long ago. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. No problem. Um, looking back into the chat, can we ensure that 18U does not play on Labor Day? Absolutely. We'll be getting that, that age group done before Labor Day um, with the understanding of them going back to school. Uh, ben, are we looking for part-time assistant coaches? The answer is always yes. Um, absolutely. So you're in the senior. Reach out to Heather McPherson. Her email is in the chat, Ben. Um, Caitlin. Yes, this meeting is being recorded, um, so you can check back in to um, see anything. And if you do have any questions, feel free to reach out to any one of us, the, the commissioners, myself, Steph, Rob, Ryan, anybody on the board. We're all more than willing to help or at least point you in the right direction. 
Um, oh, I see Heather's already jumped on, on Ben, sent me an email. Um, all the answers are already there. Uh, which affiliate is selected on the on deck? Great question. Um, we are considered inter county. Um, so we are part of the inter county baseball association. So when you fill out the on deck, make sure that's the one you're selecting. Um, great question, Alan. Um, Uh, Brad, when you'll be notified for 12 U, um, conveners are reaching out kind of as we speak. Some of them are on this call. Um, so I would expect it to be any day now. Um, but again, you can reach out to Heather and she can put you in contact with your convener specifically. Kate, will the skill level be balanced? Um, in a normal year, I'd like to say yes, it's gonna be a challenge for us this year with all the COVID protocols that we have as we try and create teams. Um, going forward, one of our plans is to have sort of some skill development camps or, or, or I don't even wanna call them evaluations, but an, an ability to, to balance some of that skill and find ways to do it throughout the season so that we have sort of some, some basis to when we go forward the next year to create teams. So it, we're going to do our best this year. It, it may not be perfect. Um, and and again, our goal is to get kids as much baseball as possible. Uh, Ryan, you have your hand up. Yeah, sorry. I, I just I just remember while while I was going through my stuff about PRCs, not not to add any further confusion, but there was one one group I missed out on, and that's coaches who have done that three years of declaration in a row. We are on like a, a four-year cycle, so you would be back to a police record check. So yeah, that is one that I missed. Again, if if you're not sure how many you've done, um, just, just email risk at gmba.ca and I can tell you, okay? Thank you, Ryan. So again, the, the chat is winding down. Um, we're, we'll stay as long as we need. If you have questions, feel free to ask. Um, we'll give you another minute or so if somebody wants to pop something into the chat or raise their hand. Um, but honestly, guys, it's been a great meeting. It's it's nice to see some faces out there. Um, we thank you so much for, for all the work that you guys are, are doing and going to put forward. Know that we are here to, to support you all along the way. If you need anything, always feel free to reach out to any one of us. Um, Jeff, I see you with your hand there, so I'll flip to you. Awesome. Thanks, Adam. Maybe quickly, I'll just, if while we wait for another question or two to come in, just quickly show uh, where to find all the links on the Baseball Ontario, uh, Baseball Ontario webpage. Um, I kind of went through that quickly. So um, the, the On Deck app can be found. You can download it uh, from the App Store, as Rob mentioned. It's also on BaseballOntario.com. Scroll down a little bit, click on On Deck, on deck um, and, uh, and then you'll have, you have to log in, so I'm already logged in. But all the pieces we've been talking about with respect to return sport protocols and so the coach training is found here. So really, really great resources, Rob mentioned. Return sport protocols are here, the very first thing you see here. And then the protocols that Stephanie went through are all right here, all really nicely laid out for us. And you can walk yourself through it. There's some FAQs, some resources, really good stuff here. And, and including the self-assessment that every, everybody needs to do before they, uh, they attend a baseball event. Um, there's also... Um, for the coaches, the waivers we talked about are here. So you're still under return to sport, same area, just down for coaches. And those resources are here under waivers, declarations, and acknowledgements. And I know some of you are already filling those out. That's where you find them on that app there. And then if we just go right back again to the, to the main page here, um, the uh, pieces that Rob spoke to around uh, coaching or under coaching center here, really good information in here. Drills, practice plans, really good stuff here. So it's a really great resource. I really encourage you to uh, spend some time there. I, I spent lots of time there myself. So yeah, that's all I wanted to add, Adam. Thanks. Oh, thank you, Jeff. Appreciate that. Um, so the, the question around the exhibition park batting cages, um, we're not exactly sure if the city's planning on opening them this year. Uh, we know that they can't, if they do, they can be rented. Um, we have, we have a mechanism through GMBA. Um, if you want to reach out to, to myself or anyone on the board, we can sort of put you in contact with them. Um, but what I will say is there is a batting cage tunnel at um, Larry Pearson Ball Diamonds, and that is open and available for use that you do not need to rent it. Um, for those of you who don't know, Larry Pearson is behind Bishop Mack um, High School in the South End. So you can go up to that one at any point and, and use it.
Any other questions? Kind of what is it, Jeff? They say you have to wait eight seconds to let everyone process into this. I think that's what they say. Yeah, there is one more question though. Uh, previously stated game might still oh. correct or will it change? Uh, I, as we are going to keep them as true to that as we can. The only current exception might be the eight U and nine U divisions um, because we are looking at with the numbers being lower in those two divisions, a combining of eight U and nine U. It's a possibility we haven't quite decided yet, but every other division um, will be on their stated uh, game nights. Practices will be on one of the available practice nights, but they may not be all of those practice nights available. Right. So if a division had Monday, Wednesday, Thursday as their practice, there may only be Monday and Wednesday as the options. Uh, Michaela, 9U is, um, you can talk to Jeff Hoffman. He can put you in contact with your convener to, to, for the division to help out. You, Moran, Moran, Mirandro, um, sorry if I butchered your name there, I apologize. Um, you do not have to book, book your practice diamonds. They will be assigned to the teams and we will be, once our, our numbers allow us, uh, we will have two teams per diamond um, so the teams can work together to figure it out. Um, all right, Madly, thank you. Um, so yeah, that's how our diamonds, they are booked. Um, so on the House League tab on the GMBA website, it does list the specific practice nights for teams. Um, so you can see what they are potentially going to be. It will be one of those nights. All right, I'm gonna look around. I mean, Jeff, Ryan, uh, Steph, Heather, any of you have anything that you want to say? Paul, there is no booking system for the, the batting cages at Pearson. No. Show up and go. Um, anybody else have anything you want to add as we wrap up here? Jeff's shaking your head no. Steph's no. Heather's no. Ryan's no. Awesome. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for, for your time. I know Scott's thanking us for ours, but I mean, in reality, this, this all happens. Golf minor baseball happens because of the volunteers that we have. Um, and, and you guys do a fantastic job. Know that we're here to support you, whatever you need. Um, and and we, we can't thank you enough. We, we know how much time and effort goes into coaching a team and helping young people develop. And, and thank you so much. So again, if you need anything from us, um, reach out to any one of us, all of our information is on the website, houseleague.gmba.ca. We'll get you in touch with myself and everybody else. So um, thank you so much. Sorry you missed the first period. Um, hopefully you can enjoy the rest of the game and, and we won't be as disappointed as uh, Michael will be when the Habs lose tonight. Um, thank you so much, guys.